Thank you, Andreas, for this introduction, and thank you all for coming. Look, I'm on the telly. Huh. Um, so, uh, you know, every superhero has a great origin story, right, don't they? So, our paper also has an interesting origin story. Um, so, it started with a constatation that uh, AI-generated data being increasingly used in our field, that is language research. Why? Because this, the, the, the synthetic data are, of course, cheap and easy to obtain. They seem to be free from legal constraints, and they also hopefully help in bias reduction, which is actually contributes to a more ethical, uh, well, contributes to the, the general ethics uh, in our field. At least that's the, um, this is what we hope. So, uh, um, with ChatGPT, of course, the explosion of, uh, in popularity of um, generative AI, we covered it uh, in extenso uh, with the keynote. Um, and the, the question that has become uh, more prevalent is now, are synthetic data, AI-generated data, data generated, for example, by ChatGPT, really uh, copyright-free? And so, to discuss this question, we have organized a uh, Clarin Cafe uh, on April 11 uh, with some uh, invited speakers, actually quite a, a great selection of those, uh, including uh, Toby Bond, a partner at Bird and Bird, and Professor Thomas Margoni uh, from this uh, very city, the University of Leuven. Uh, the whole event uh, was, of course, recorded and is now available on uh, YouTube. Uh, and I've been told yesterday that it is the uh, most viewed uh, video on YouTube, at least as far as Clarin videos are concerned. Uh, all right. So, so far, so good. Um, this is our origin story. Uh, so, uh, our first, um, um, well, our point of departure, so to say, in the debate uh, is that there is indeed no copyright in AI outputs uh, for, in the very least, uh, because there is no human authorship in AI outputs. And although human authorship is not an express requirement in international copyright, the Berne Convention, the founding text of uh, international copyright law, uh, uses words such as honor or death in relation to the author, which clearly indicates that the author should be a human being. Nevertheless, uh, numerous copyright systems uh, actually accept um, corporate ownership, that is, a uh, a situation in which copyright is actually owned ab initio uh, from the beginning uh, by uh, a legal entity rather than an individual author. This is, for example, the case of um, works for hire, works made by uh, employees, to simplify a little bit, in Anglo-Saxon uh, copyright. So, it doesn't seem to be that disturbing at the end of the day, lack of uh, human authorship, because corporate entities can hold uh, copyright. This is something that exists in international copyright already, and it's well, um, uh, well known. Um, but then the other problem is that even if we admit non-human authorship, then um, AI-generated works lack originality. Originality is the requirement for copyright protection and it is generally now in the European Union uh, defined in a subjective way uh, that is as um, uh, a personal imprint of the author. So the work has to result from um, the author's own intellectual uh, activity. The, the work has to be the author's own intellectual creation. So there has to be a subjective link uh, between the uh, the author and uh, the work. 
and this uh, mark of the author's personality is left in the work uh, via uh, free and creative choices that the author makes in the creative process. Now, can int artificial intelligence make free choices? Well, that would imply uh, that artificial intelligence uh, is a sentient being and has its own goals, which does not seem to be the case yet. On the other hand, um, technical constraints, uh, technical rules that have to be followed in the creative process, uh, or generative process rather, leave no room for any uh, creative choices. So a work that is a pure uh, output of a technical process uh, cannot meet the criterion of originality. So this is the classic view on, on the issue. There is no copyright in AI-generated outputs for precisely these two reasons. And this uh, point of view was uh, also adopted by the US Copyright Office um, in a relatively recent uh, decision concerning this Im image entitled uh, A Recent Entrance to Paradise. This is an AI-generated uh, image and it was refused um, copyright registration by the US Copyright Office for uh, this exact motive that it lacks uh, human authorship. And this was very recently confirmed by the US District Court uh, in August uh, this year. However, as you know, in law, uh, things are rarely black or white. Most things are actually gray. And so there is a gray area, quite a vast gray area, when it comes to um, uh, copyright status of AI-generated outputs. So. Uh, there is a thin line to draw uh, between uh, AI-assisted outputs, AI-assisted works, and AI-generated works. Uh, one can think of uh, the AI as a simple tool, something like a more sophisticated uh, paintbrush uh, that is merely used in, by the human author in the creative process. Uh, you know, AI does not create out of its own volition. It is always um, operated, prompted by, uh, by a human. And perhaps this human can be regarded uh, as an author. Now, this discussion actually leads us to the quite an obvious example of uh, photography. Uh, nowadays, photography is largely assisted by technology. It's uh, modern cameras that choose many, I mean, I don't know much about photography, but those of you who do know that modern cameras uh, take a lot of decisions uh, automatically for the author. And it doesn't uh, mean that the result is not protected by copyright because it's still uh, a human that pushes the button and directs the camera in, in the intended direction. So maybe we can apply this reasoning by, by analogy. And indeed, the, the US Copyright Office in its 2023 uh, statement adopted a more nuanced approach to the issue. Uh, it said that yes, mere prompting is not enough to claim copyright and authorship, but uh, AI-generated content can be edited or arranged by a human in an original way and then uh, be protected by copyright. I'll give you an example uh, right away. Moreover, there's also the question of uh, um, to what extent uh, copyright in AI inputs and in the data used for uh, training influences uh, the legal status of, of the output. And I will, I have a special slide about this uh, in a moment. So first, um, this is a case that can illustrate my first point about the original arrangement um, or reworking of AI outputs that confers copyright protection. Um, this is a comic book entitled Zarya of the Dawn. Uh, this is, a, well, a comic book, a graphic novel, as, is, as it is more elegantly called. Uh, the story and uh, the, the text, the dialogues were uh, written by a human author by, uh, by the nickname of Kashtanova, um, whereas all the artwork was uh, generated by Mid Journey. Um, 
and uh, so the Copyright Office adopted a, a rather distributive, uh, distributed approach. Um, it, it decided that the story uh, and the text, as well as the whole uh, graphic novel, can be protected by copyright. However, individual images cannot. So those individual images are not protected by copyright, but, but when they are arranged in a particular order to tell a story, then they become uh, copyright protected. That's one of my uh, favorite uh, uh, slides that I uh, often show. Uh, you remember I mentioned uh, the question of how uh, the copyright status of the training data influences the copyright status of the output. Uh, Getty Images lawsuit. Uh, so uh, you see this picture, it was generated by uh, uh, Stable Diffusion, uh, a um, model that was quite obviously trained on uh, data from Getty Images and without permission because many uh, of images, many of the, the, the images generated by uh, this uh, uh, model uh, contain this distorted uh, watermark, which is a giveaway, telltale sign uh, that, uh, well, uh, something went, well, something was a little bit fishy about the training process, right? So, um, Getty Images sued uh, Stability AI, that is the, the entity that commercializes uh, the model, uh, in both the US and in the UK, uh, and we are waiting for the decision. Was it a copyright infringement? Uh, are those images uh, generated by uh, a model infringing on Getty's uh, intellectual property? That's the central question. We don't know, but hopefully soon we'll have an idea. Now, how does it apply to text data? It does because large language models are actually known for being capable of regurgitating large portions of uh, input data, which is especially important considering that excerpts as short as 11 consecutive words can in fact be protected by copyright. Uh, as decided by the Court of Justice of the European Union. Now, I'm, I'll be uh, concluding soon, but first uh, let me tell you about um, AI-generated li literature. Uh, so, in February, it was uh, reported that there are more than 200 books on Amazon that uh, uh, have ChatGPT listed as author or co-author. Now, we see over a thousand results. There are books, uh, ChatGPT for authors, how to use ChatGPT for your fiction or non-fiction writing. Uh, so, uh, AI-generated content is, is really influencing the, the publishing market nowadays. It's a real issue. So, if we leave AI-generated content with no protection at all, what it means? Well, uh, this is uh, allegedly the first uh, machine-written uh, book from the 80s, The Policeman's Beard is Half Constructed, a very nice book, I recommend you have a look at it. It's uh, freely avail available as PDF online. Um, but uh, what if I use uh, ChatGPT to generate a book and I just put my own name on it, um, which would be, uh, well, a a an ethical uh, um, a a thing to do, but is it really illegal? Well, if there is no intellectual property in uh, this material, then it's hardly uh, illegal. It would actually violate uh, ChatGPT's uh, terms and conditions because ChatGPT's terms and conditions expressly prohibit um, uh, misrepresentation consisting of uh, pretending that the content is human-generated. Few people know about it, but it's there. Uh, but then what would happen? Well, OpenAI would close my ChatGPT account, and that's pretty much it, uh, right? So, um, it also means that if there is no copyright, there is no copyright exceptions, including the text and data mining exception. So, whether or not you can use the content for text and data mining depends actually on the contractual arrangements, the terms of service. Um, so, there is a need for some sort of legal protection on the market, and in, already in, the, in, in 2020, the European Parliament called for an IP right to protect uh, AI outputs in order to encourage investment and improve legal certainty. As you know, uh, the European Parliament regularly calls for many 
things that are often con contradictory because this is how democracy works. Uh, and in 2023, recently, the European Commission stated that the issue of uh, copyright and AI-generated uh, outputs does not require legislative action. Some uh, years ago, uh, there was a discussion over an exclusive right for data producers. Uh, it seems that the idea has been abandoned and there is a new tendency in EU legislation that is focused non, not on monopolies, but rather on governance frameworks uh, with uh, stakeholders being given rights uh, such as access, portability, uh, and maybe um, this uh, is the right way to regulate uh, AI outputs uh, as well. Uh, just a brief idea. Uh, in the UK, they have a framework for... Um, uh, well, already since the 80s, they have a framework for computer-generated works that is kind of, uh, uh, well, very original, certainly. Uh, but let me just tell you very briefly that although it seems perfect for uh, protecting AI-generated outputs, it has never been used in practice, almost never been used in practice. Um, and it uh, has been described as unclear and uh, contradictory. Uh, so it will probably be... Um, um, uh, reformed soon. That's in the UK. Thank you for your attention. Yes, thank you. Very interesting. Uh, I'll, yeah, I don't know if it's a short question, but <laughs> I'll try. Uh, so you mentioned the terms and conditions of yep. OpenAI, and my question is how does that interact with copyright law? Because I'm not a lawyer, so I don't mm -hmm. know. But for context, there's this issue in open, so so open source model building where people use ChatGPT to create data, Mm -hmm. And then they use that data to train their own model. And yes. in the open AI terms and conditions, they say, you can't use our data yeah. to train commercial models. Or so I, I think they, uh, I had a look at it yesterday, actually. I think they say that models that would compete with ChatGPT. Yes. That is the yeah. wording, I think. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So the question is, can they, the license of those finally trained models be mm -hmm. commercial or no? Has the copyright law any influence on that? Or no, because we are not in the realm of copyright. We are pure, purely in the realm of yeah. contract law. Um, uh, OpenAI is giving you a service that is available only through their own API. And it's the use of this API as well as its outputs that is regulated by contract. And they are really free to put whatever they want. In, and, you know, you, just by using the service, you are accepting these terms and conditions. You are bound by them. Now, uh, that's the general answer. The specific answer is to what extent uh, um, uh, a uh, model that is made available under a license that does not contain the non-commercial requirement would violate the, this, uh, these terms of service. I am ready to argue that, uh, <clears throat> well, a smaller model, more specialized model, uh, that is mostly intended for research use, for example, is hardly a competition to um, to GPT uh, 3 or 4, 3.5 or 4. So I, I'm ready to argue that there's no competition in between the two. They are not a similar product, so Thank therefore no competition. But Thank you. Thank you. The last question is from Tamash Varadi. Well, the term re regurgitate or oh. mm -hmm. It stuck me mm -hmm. because technically speaking, I mean, the, the, the position is not as simple as that because technically speaking, what is happening here, if you find the output a verbatim uh, mm -hmm. replica as it were, but it's mm -hmm. not a replica, it's not a copy, it's a reconstruction, a reconstruction of the sequences of the words, mm -hmm. uh, on the basis of of um, the the statistical um, uh, probabilities that the the system learned right. from the training data right. so there is actually in my view there is actually no sense of talking about copying anything here it's a creation it's a recreation it's an active so it's 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 the system, as you know, is nothing mm -hmm. but the weights. 
Yep. So no, not a word is contained in, in a model, however large. So, so this, whatever the output is not a copy. That is indeed a, a very interesting question. Uh, I, I agree. It can be argued that it's not a copy. It's a sort of parallel creation and the history of copyright law knows cases of copyright crea uh, parallel creativity. It's called uh, a situation in which two authors independently created something identical or very similar. That can happen with slogans or short poems or stuff like this. Um, and uh, yeah, generally, if there is no copying involved, then there is no, uh, no copyright infringement. But I think considering the scale of the phenomenon and the economic impact, that will be very difficult to argue. Uh, if you can uh, ask ChatGPT, uh, can you please quote the first chapter of Stephen King's Shining and ChatGPT just provides you uh, uh, with the, what happens to be incidentally the exact word for word uh, recreation of the first chapter of Stephen King's Shining, I don't think that Stephen King would be very convinced by the argument that it wasn't copied from his novel, but it was indeed. Yes, well, I, it's, but it's an academic debate. I think the economic impact is such that it will not fly in the court. The, the parallel creation cases I mentioned were really minor and more of a curiosity than something with the potential to, you know, revolutionize the, 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 um, the book market or any other market for that matter. Right. May I briefly comment on them? Uh, um, but copyright does not only prohibit in, in most cases it's not only the copyright but also it is forbidden to have derived work so it comes uh, as a pair uh, copy and derived work is not allowed in the according to the uh, owner of the of the text in many cases for instance if you look in a book 